Let's talk some Philadelphia Eagles on this beautiful Sunday. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. Hope all of you out there are having a great Sunday, a phenomenal weekend. And this is going to be the week of the NFL draft. I cannot wait for it. There's been so much build up to this moment. What is Howie Roseman in this front office going to do? We're going to find out Thursday, Friday, Saturday during the 2024 NFL draft. And please make sure you subscribe because we're going to be live every day, every round, every pick, providing you with some great scouting profiles, deep dives, and overall analysis with all of the draft picks that the Eagles do select can't wait for it. Hope to see you all there. As for what we're getting into on this Sunday edition of Philadelphia Eagles now, is cornerback Isaiah Rodgers not getting reinstated after all? Plus, the Eagles, Howie Roseman, shutting down some trade calls for all-pro wide receiver A.J. Brown. Let's start off here with Isaiah Rodgers. This development coming out the other day, just haven't had an opportunity to talk about it and break it down here on the show yet. But the NFL announced on Thursday that it's reinstating five players who were suspended indefinitely last year for violating the league's gambling policy. Wide receiver Quintez Cephas, safety C.J. Moore, defensive lineman Demetrius Taylor, wide receiver Shaka Tony, and linebacker Rashad Berry. The name not included on that list, Eagles cornerback Isaiah Rodgers, and Amidst this news, he deactivated his Instagram account, which tells me he's a little bit frustrated and surprised by this news because he's been teasing his return. When he was suspended, he was wearing a white Eagles helmet, teasing that he can't wait to come back for the 2024 season. On his X page, he released a video that basically announced that he was returning, but then the NFL doesn't include him on that list of players that they are reinstating for the same thing that Isaiah Rodgers was penalized for, and that's the league's gambling policy. Isaiah Rodgers with the Indianapolis Colts, a very talented player, an outside corner whose pro football focus numbers were very good, and also gave Indianapolis some really good returnability. So if Isaiah Rodgers is not eligible to play in 2024 for Philadelphia like the Eagles were anticipating, and that's why they brought him in and picked him up last year after that gambling suspension, what does this mean for the Eagles and their plan going into the draft? I think this makes cornerback even more of a priority for Philadelphia going into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And interestingly enough, the odds for the Eagles taking a corner in the first round have gone up over the weekend. They have not drafted a corner in the first round since 2002 in Lido Shepard. And I think the Eagles were counting on Isaiah Rodgers to be a contributor for this football team, to maybe challenge James Bradbury or Keely Ringo and Eli Ricks for snaps on the outside opposite of Darius Slay. At the very least, he was going to give you a very good depth option and a very solid returner who's had a lot of success in returning the football. Now, of note here, Philadelphia in the pre-draft process has met with a lot of offensive linemen, and we've talked about plenty of those offensive linemen here on Eagles now, but the notable defensive backs that they have also met with in the pre-draft process, bringing them in for top 30 visits and 30 visits overall, Terion Arnold, defensive back out of Alabama, Kool-Aid McKinstry, defensive back out of Alabama who played on the other side of Arnold, Drew Phillips, Defensive back out of Kentucky, who's more of a second-round pick. And then Cooper DeJean, the defensive back out of Iowa. Some mock drafts has the Eagles moving up for a player like Quinian Mitchell, who's the number one corner on my cornerback big board. Length, athleticism, speed, acceleration, deceleration, plays on the ball, a pass breakup machine, swagger, confidence, a short memory. All of those traits, I think, very important for a cornerback on the outside because you're going to get beat. But how do you bounce back and can you make a big play after you get beat? And there's been some chatter, unconfirmed reports that Philadelphia has met with Mitchell in the pre-draft process as well. The Eagles in previous years for their 30 visits uh, have ended up drafting a lot of the players that they've met with on these 30 visits and they've caught wind of that so a lot of the pre-draft meetings that they've had with prospects have been set scheduled then canceled because I think other teams and this is a little bit of a conspiracy theory out there 
kind of know, okay, if the Eagles are bringing this player in for a visit, they're really interested in drafting them. So they're trying to keep some of these names under wraps. But there's been some buzz about them meeting with Quinian Mitchell in the pre-draft process. And for what they look for in corners, as far as measurables go, Quinian Mitchell checks every box. And they do prioritize players who they think can play in the pressure cooker of Philadelphia. And Quinian Mitchell certainly fits that bill. Now, here's what's interesting about the Isaiah Rodgers situation. Is that Rodgers bet on his own team... And then after he was caught with gambling, the NFL formulated a rule, again, after Rodgers was already suspended, that players who do bet on their own team would be suspended two years. Now, legally, I think that Isaiah Rodgers would have a case in court if him and his agent wanted to take it there. And if he does not get reinstated, and some people have said, well, he got caught in July, the one-year suspension would be up in July. It's not how it works. When they say one-year suspension, they're talking about a football season. So the 2023 football season was what he was suspended for, and he has not been reinstated like those other players. But going back to the court argument here, if Isaiah Rodgers bet on his own team, but there was not a rule in place that you could not do that, and if you did, you'd be suspended two years, you know, that causes an interesting conversation in court because that rule was not set in stone when Isaiah Rogers violated the league's gambling policy. At the time, they gave him a one-year suspension. They can, in my opinion, form a rule after there was already an original ruling and say, you know what, upon thinking about this, you're gone for two years. I think that's a little bit too harsh. It's also an interesting scenario. I get it. Players, don't bet on your league. Don't bet on your team. John Tay Porter, banned for life from the NBA. What the hell are you doing? Just don't bet on it. But the fact that these leagues are in bed with these gambling companies does make it interesting. It's a little bit of a conflict of interest. Because as early as a few years ago, major professional sports leagues weren't touching these betting companies. Now they are because they know it's a market that's taken off and they can cash in. But then you run into these problems where players are placing bets. Now, up to this point, we haven't seen anything about players throwing games. But you've been loose with the rules, right? As far as being against it. Now you're all for it. You can't tell Isaiah Rogers, you're suspended one year. And then we're going to make a rule after you committed a crime against the league. And then suspend you for two years when that rule was not in place at the time. I don't think that's fair. So if Isaiah Rodgers does not get reinstated, I think he has a case in court. We'll certainly see what happens, and he could end up being reinstated. But this is certainly developing news in the lead-up to the draft because this can change the Eagles' draft strategy if they don't know if they're going to have Isaiah Rodgers for 2024. We'll get to A.J. Brown coming up next. But let me tell you about prize picks. You want to play daily fantasy sports? I highly encourage it. It's a lot of fun. Prize Picks has the best, most used, and largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America, and they have a phenomenal deal. $100 deposit match for first-time users if you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS. They make daily fantasy sports so easy, and you can combine sports, Major League Baseball, NBA playoffs, in the fall, NFL, College football, what a great Saturday, Sunday that would be if you're riding with some prize picks. You pick two or more players, you choose more or less on their projected stat totals, and you can win up to 25 times your money. That link is hanging out down in the show notes and in the comment section of this video. So A.J. Brown, late last week, going into the weekend, changed his profile picture to Tom Brady. He has since explained this, and I didn't make it a big deal. Of course people did because... That's the social media society that we're living in now. But he changed his profile picture to Tom Brady because Tom Brady is one of his favorite players of all time. He loves how Brady was such a competitor and a champion, and he felt motivated by Tom Brady. And then people speculate, does A.J. Brown want to get traded to the New England Patriots? Now, A.J. Brown, I don't think, wants to get traded. But the New England Patriots tried to trade for A.J. Brown. That according to Albert Breer, NFL insider, who did report that the Eagles have no intentions of trading superstar wide receiver A.J. Brown as they have, quote, 
shut down all reports of trading him. And I think you further said that the New England Patriots did call about A.J. Brown. At the very least, the Patriots have been looking into wide receivers all throughout this offseason because their offense has been stagnant over the last couple of years. Now, Albert Breer did add, Philadelphia's gotten inquiries on A.J. Brown, or inquiries, I should say. They have shut them all down and told other teams that he is not available. The A.J. Brown trade buzz, I don't think is ever going to stop. I think it's a little bit unfair to him. He's explained how people misunderstand him for being a competitor, and some of these sideline spats are because he wants to be great, and he wants to hold his teammates accountable, and he gets frustrated when the team isn't playing well. Look, we just started a pickoff or a pickup league playing basketball for chat sports, and we lost our first game, and myself and others were getting pissed that we weren't playing well. We've never played together. The other team that we played against has played together for five to seven years, but we were still getting frustrated with guys not being in the right spot, missing defensive assignments. If I missed a shot, I got mad at myself because I wanted to win. People who are competitive, people who seek greatness, people who want to be great are sometimes misunderstood. Like Tom Brady barking at his teammates. Like Kobe Bryant going after his teammates verbally. Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr at one point back in the day. To be great, you have to be cutthroat sometimes. A.J. Brown is kind of built like that. And in a city that celebrates uber competitors, I'm kind of surprised that A.J. Brown gets all of this flack. Having him and Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley, Dallas Goddard on this offense, why would you want to break that up? And sometimes you see these articles in the Philadelphia Inquirer, you see these conversations on sports talk radio, drawing up some drama to get A.J. Brown traded. Why would you trade away special? A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, in two years together, have been one of the best wide receiver duos this organization's ever had. They're one of the best in the entire NFL. But in making drama out of nothing, sometimes these players get tired of it. They can't deal with the pressure and the media of Philadelphia, and they want out. And then things crumble. Now, I am interested to see moving forward, now that Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are both making $25 million per year, and A.J. Brown is the better player as compared to Devontae Smith, when he's due for that new contract extension, he's going into year three of four of that, he's definitely going to ask for more money, especially as the wide receiver market increases and changes. So then down the road, do things change? If the Eagles don't play well this year, if there's more drama, does that change? But Howie Roseman's not dumb, man. He's put together a roster with some really special players. Why would you get rid of a unique playmaker on the outside? I'm glad that he shut down these trade ideas. Wanted to touch on that because it's been a big story across Philadelphia over the last couple of days. All right. Thanks to everybody for watching all throughout this week. Lead up to the draft. Plenty of content to come. And then come draft time, every player that the Eagles select, scouting profiles, deep dive analysis, great insight on all of these draftees. And we'll be live every day, every round, every pick of the draft right here on Eagles Now. Super Chat giveaways, audience interaction. It's the place to be for all of the real ones. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Go Eagles. Go Phillies. Go Sixers. Flyers have been bad for a long time, but go Flyers too. 